you, you little scamp. Do you know how much the core you took was worth? I stole it from the castle. Three years it took me to get it. And now... Stay out of it! If you die, it'll be as good as new. You brought this on yourself! From now on, I'll protect you. I'll keep you safe. Always. My name is Jin. What's yours? Laura. It seems like sending Alcos was the right choice. You all right? I've been through worse. I can handle it. Jin, I swear I'll make your dream come true. So stop putting yourself at risk. There's still time. Is that part of your dream, too? What are we in the end? This hunger I feel, this thirst, is it really my own or is it someone else's? <sighs> Sometimes I can't tell. Tell me, Jin, are you really here? I don't know where I really am. You're starting to sound like a human. Oh, yeah? Perhaps we're not so different after all. Humans and blades. What's the deal with this ceasefire? A tribunal, it looks like. Praetor Amalthus is here in person. And who's going to argue with the Praetor? Does he have any clue how many men we lost? If those Ardanians get away with this, architect, damn it. Quit your grumbling, mate. All this is way beyond our pay grade. You got that right. We're all just faceless cannon fodder to the bigwigs. CO says jump, we jump.
Did you miss me? Nicely done. You can count on me. Yet more practice. I can keep getting better. I feel I can go. Best of luck, guys. Gotcha. She'll be fun. I vow to carry out my sworn duty. Okay. Understood. Sure. Go on. Okie dokie. I imagine I'll fit right in. I won't let I'll you down. I'll be in the other party then. Sure. Go on. Reporting. Best of luck, guys. I'll wield this power to protect my friends. My deepest thanks to you for agreeing to this ceasefire, Queen Rakura, Emperor Nile. As I recall from the Assyrian Treaty of 350 years ago, the Praetorium was to refrain from intervention in times of war. And yet here you are intervening. But I trust you have a suitable justification, Your Eminence. Naturally. But first, to ensure impartiality in these negotiations, may I present Nira Nira, acting chairman of the Argentum Trade Guild. Furthermore, representing the Tantalese, His Highness the Crown Prince Ozyclirus Brunev Tantal will also be attending. The Crown Prince? The prodigal prince of Tantal. <laughs> What a spectacle. Seems the Praetor has as much clout around here as ever. Could we not just take them out here and now? Good point. 
All the principal nation's heads gathered here? It'd make things easy later. The way to the world tree must first be opened. Wiping out mankind is the easy part. We could manage that ourselves. Even so... That isn't our only goal, remember? We must wait for the stage to be set. Is Jin serious about this? Yeah. I've been wondering that myself. <laughs> oh, he's serious. He always is. He will annihilate mankind, and then he will kill the Architect. Now, it seems Mor Ardain has been accused of a unilateral breach of treaty in this matter. Emperor Nile, I open the floor to you. Is there anything you wish to say? While we are still conducting investigations into the cause, it cannot be denied that weaponry belonging to our forces was discharged against Uriah. Regardless of any possible reason and circumstance, we are prepared to offer recompense for this grave offence. So you want to settle this with money? We will provide any compensation deemed necessary. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding. To my ears, it sounds almost as if you mean to imply that the blame for these offences does not lie with your majesty at all. We are investigating. I ask that we not draw any hasty conclusions. What need is there for investigation? I believe a cause has already been established. There are witnesses. And that would be? What a preposterous notion. The people you speak of are merely a terrorist group. How could they possibly command that measure of... It's the truth. I, Ozyclyrus, swear this in the name of King Eulogimenos Tantal. Can confirm, ex-Chairman Banner, give these people some kind of supplies. Military supplies, methinks, and in great number, yes. But why would... What if I were to tell you that the Aegis Malus, who raised the world five centuries ago, was involved? Ridiculous! Everyone knows he disappeared in a blaze of flame! He's very much alive, believe me. That arsehole, I mean, the Aegis has confronted us in person. And if my word is not enough for you... A blade? But... but that poor crystal... <gasps> this is another Aegis, named Mithra. Your Highness has heard of her, surely. So the rumors that reached us were true. Who is its driver? If you knew that, I dare say your surprise would be even greater. But that is not the matter we are here to discuss, Your Highness. This is a dire situation. Six o'clock already. Mithra's been in there for a long time now. We've just got to trust them. They're dealing with the leaders of whole nations. It's not like there's anything you or me can do to help. Ugh. I've noticed something about Malos. He's an Aegis, but you wouldn't know it from how he's fighting. I think... I'm pretty sure he's damaged in some way. You mean he can't use the full extent of his powers? 
The wounds I dealt in our battle long ago may not be completely healed. His end goal is Elysium. He wants to go back to the place he was born. There he can heal until his powers have recovered. If Malos is allowed to restore himself... The horrors of five centuries past will return. Or worse still, Malos's goal is simple. He means to destroy humanity in its entirety. Why would anyone desire that? Perhaps he doesn't even need a reason. It seems to be a deep-seated drive. An instinct. As natural as breathing. All of this is my responsibility. Praetor Amalthus? Whatever do you mean? It was none other than I who awakened Malos and unleashed him upon the world. So, your eminence, the rumor that you were once Malos's driver is... I never intended to obscure the truth. It is writ plain for all to see in history books. I was a fool. It was to prevent such foolishness that all passage to the World Tree was forbidden after the Aegis War. However, it has become apparent that the laws of men do not apply to Malos. <sighs> the time may have come to lift that restriction. I appreciate this. Don't think you've earned my trust. But since Rex is going to Elysium, their paths are bound to cross. That's all. I'm surprised you seem so devoted to the boy. It's for both our sakes. But you, Amalthus, who is it that you're living for? I guess they did call her a goddess. The state funeral makes sense. Shouldn't you be with him? He's a boy. Best not to bother them at times like this. <laughs> I expected you'd be more clingy. You really are different from him. Actually, letting him be was more her idea than mine. Really? Pirates? Get out. So wait. You're saying you want to go be clingy, or what? I'll burn you. I can't, I can't. Sheesh. It's weird, though. What is? I mean, don't you think it's odd? Normally, if a blade or its driver dies, it'll just go back to being a core crystal. So why is Fan just dead? I did wonder the same thing. There's only one way I know for a dead blade to keep its physical form. Remember Minoth? I mean Cole. He was a flesh eater. 
Yeah. But Fan wasn't a flesh eater. I can say that for sure. What's that? That's the shape of Fan's core crystal. Well, how it used to be. But now it's a triangle. Rex and I are quite a unique case, but this is different still. How is it different? If a blade shares its core with another, its shape changes in a uniform fashion. In our case, the center part went to Rex and the outer part to us. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be a rule. But Fans isn't like that. Exactly. It looks more like someone stole her core, doesn't it? My apologies. Did I keep you waiting? No, not really. What were you doing? I was cleansing the core crystals. It markedly increases their resonance success rate. Bonding with the crystal carries certain risks, you understand. I know. When I became the driver of an Aegis, this power was awakened in me. So... I might be able to do it too. Who knows? Different people are cut out for different things. Right, yeah. Now then. My work is done for the day. Come with me. A special envoy? To Tantal? Me? Correct. Behold. As a salvager, I imagine you are already aware. But this is Allrest, the world we currently inhabit. We make our home on Titans, moving in circles around the world tree. And here lies the Great Void. This void came into being 500 years ago. It did not exist prior to that. So I've heard. It's in our way anyway. It stops us reaching the world tree. The Great Void is carved from the Cloud Sea by a monstrous beast known as Ophion. Wait, you mean that thing? To be precise, it is an artifice, a servant of the Aegis. Of Mithra? So that thing is Mithra's. 
Then what did they attack us for? Doesn't make sense. Ophion was felled in the ancient battle with Malos, sinking below the clouds. This means someone must have revived it. Correct. And you're saying that someone was Zeke's home country, Tantal? Yes. They gave Ophion one directive. To ensure that none approach the World Tree. They sought to prevent a repeat of the horrors of the Aegis War. So, an obstacle was created. The Great Void. How did they manage a feat like that? As I've said, mankind is regressing. Only one artifact remains that can rescind Ophion's orders, and it lies in Tantal. It's called the Omega Feta, and it's guarded by the royal family. I'll take you to it. I've prepared your envoy documents already. Your quest is to set foot in Elysium, correct? Malos and his ilk will surely seek the Omega Feta for themselves. I would ask you to reach Elysium before they do, and inform me of what you find there. Do it as a favor for a once foolish old man, and so that people may have a future in this dying world. Let us go. We can reach Tantal by ship, but once we're there, we'll need to do a spot of walking. So we're traveling with Shell, Ledia. Never thought I'd see the day. I think you'll find I make a fantastic ally. Mm, luck of Zeke, not so great. Bet we shipwrecked by tomorrow. <laughs> Cheeky furball. We're all gonna die. Hey, Zeke. You said before that Torna concerned you too. What did you mean by that? What? Oh, yeah, that. I don't know about those clowns, but Torna, the country that fell 500 years ago, they were the ancestors of us Tantalese. The people of Tantal are descended from Adam, the hero of Torna, who escaped its destruction. So, after Pyra fell asleep, Adam escaped to Tantal? That's right. That is the first I've heard of it. I have studied much history, but this story never featured most peculiar. <laughs> We're humble. Don't really like to brag about it. The only real trace left is in this here sigil of the royal family. So why did you awaken Hayes? Because her power was of great use to me. Indol has found itself under attack from Torna a number of times. She was necessary in driving them back. Really? Then why don't you seem to have any others? Blades, that is. <laughs> Driver though I may be, I am no fighter. Besides, I find the warrior monks here so reliable. They get the job done. <laughs> if you say so. I wonder, do you know why Torna are using the name of a dead country? Jin was a blade of Torna once. Loyalty and nostalgia. Who can say? Perhaps both. Is that really all there is to it? You don't think so? I don't know much about what happened while I slept. 
There are no written records, either. All we have is stories passed down. And you think that is insufficient? History is a murky thing. Only those present can truly know what took place. But weren't you one of those present? And that is why I offer you my cooperation. I guess we'll find out if we go to Tanto. Hmm. Tensions seem high. From what I gather, it seems an official summit is to be held between Morardane and Uriah. A summit? You mean about the recent punch-up? But I thought... Didn't Praetor Amalthus get them to stop and sort it all out? Perhaps there are some discussions they would prefer Indole not to be privy to. Besides, Uriah doesn't like to associate too closely with Indol. They'd hate to be seen as acquiescing to the Praetor's will. Got to keep up appearances, you know. Acquiescing? You what? Like letting him tell them what's what. <laughs> For such a span, are you sure you some big words? How can? Stop calling me that! Buzz off, kitty no-mates! Anyway... This summit would explain why Morag isn't around. Indeed. She has much to attend to. Shared sovereignty over Gormot. Yes. I don't think anything less would be sufficient to placate them. The Senate would never approve it. I can overrule them by decree. Of course... I would need to secure Senator Roderick's cooperation. Imperial decree? If it's come to that, well, then I cannot dissent. I cannot help but admire your courage, Your Majesty. That means a lot, coming from you. Acting Chairman Nira Nira. Sorry for intrude. It is emergency, so Nira Nira take liberty of drop by unannounced. You certainly look troubled, Chairman. So, what is this emergency you speak of? Well...
So, we can make our way to Tantal from here. I assume the Praetor has a ship waiting for us. Hey, Shaled. What? Are we really gonna just leave Morag behind? Who's leaving anyone? She's got her own priorities, you know? Yeah, but still. Anyway, her schedule is filled with official duties right now. For sure. It's just a bit of a shame is all. You know, since we came all this way together. I guess I know how you feel, chum. Huh? Speak of the devil? Banners going for the summit. On top of everything, an assassination attempt. If blood gets spilled at the summit, it'll mean war. War's good for business, after all. I guess he wants to use that to get himself back in with the guild. Why, that little? I was wondering where he'd slunk off to. What a sneaky git. It seems acting chairman Nira Nira wishes to take care of this incident covertly, to avoid it reflecting badly upon the Guild. So you came to us? If we mobilize the army, the whole thing will become public. Oh, I get it. So we're a more convenient solution. I'm not forcing you. If you refuse, Bridget and I will do what we can alone. Ah, oh, come off it, lady! You wouldn't even think of dragging us into this, if you thought you could handle it on your own. I suppose not. You know Banner as well as I. There's no telling what he might be plotting. According to Acting Chairman Nira Nira, several giant weapons were being built at the factory where we last saw him. And one of them is currently unaccounted for. Giant weapons? Got it. Besides, you know, we've got our own score to settle with him. Thank you. It will be easier to focus on my duties knowing you are on the case. Good luck. Leave it to us. I'd mention all friends returned safely. Yeah. Trust me, I'm your I'm growing stronger. My growth can't be
That's that. Great work. I'm stronger. This will be good for support. Just wait till I perfected this one. Just you wait. You need my help? I'll be in the other party then. Okay, understood. Reporting. Finish the job properly. And arrived. Oh, this is where we were going.
Stop everything. Hold it. What? What? what, what? <laughs> Don't play dumb. Poison. That food is poisoned. Poison? You kids crazy in brains. We're past talking. Quick, grab them. Yeah. I can I'm do going this alone. Alone. I won't I won't even break a sweat. Smash. Ah. One shot. Get out of here. Raging tiger. Someone's end is now fire. Sure. Roger! Oh, what the hell is this? He did not have to shine! Good job, Frank! Show up! Let's This is where we put our friends! Oh, yeah! Rolling Smash! Oh, yeah! We'll beat them with the double spinning edge! Please wait. Papoonin, what are you doing here? What silly question. It's Papoonin who hire world famous band of gourmet chefs, fire dragons. World famous gourmet chefs. Mora Dane, very insistent, want only very best food for important summit. Papoonin work wings to bone finding chefs, and now what this? Uh, so you mean... These guys are just a bunch of cooks. I did think they were not putting up much of a fight. Then this food is actually... I could eat this stuff forever. What friend doing? Very expensive food now go to waste. Sorry. We really did think they were here to murder someone. Murder? What this nonsense friends talk. I demand compensation. Friends have no idea how much time and money Papunin spent on this. An explosion? Huh? From where? Hey, what's going on? Explosion in the hangar! Right when everyone was busy with Queen Rakura's arrival. It's really bad. The Queen is here. This is it. Rex, we need to hurry. Yeah. Hey, 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 wait! Hey, no running away! Compensation! Who are you, villain? Is this some underhanded Ardadian trick? But also right. Truth is complicated. Anyhow, here is where Queen died. If it looks like Queen killed by Mora Dane, me in the money again! That voice... Banner, from the Argentum Guild. Correct! Tough marks for the Queen! But you were unseated as chairman. It's not so easy to get rid of Banner. Trade Guild of Argentum belong to Banner, down to last screw, last drop of oil. <sighs> Hold it, Banner. Yo, Rex! Nah, Banner not let Rex interfere with plans. Again and again, Banner not stand for this. Upon that artificial blade. It... Rosa! Meh, meh, meh. Tora feel much greater power than before. Especially from Mark on forehead. What's going on? 
What's that? <laughs> Even an emperor comes straight to Vanna. Convenient little mob to play. Come on, Vanna. Cut the bad guy talk and accept you've lost. You know you won't get away with it. What with all these witnesses here? If Banna simply kill everyone, then nobody blah! Victory of Banna is a shock! You know we can't let you do that! <laughs> you think you handle the power of a crazy Giga Rosa? Things go very different this time! Let's show him a thing or three. I'll let you know if you start fighting. And just you. Yeah. Make it a yeah. 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 Rolling smash. Do it. You finally got ahead. something right. Ready. You're mine. We want to blow with you. Let me show it. Well done. 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 Well Well Play combo, first in force. Even Giga Rosa defeated by these nasty meddling kids. This ends here, Bada. You are under arrest. The Praetorium will handle the judgment. Assassination is a serious matter. Your sentence will be harsh. So the mercantile genius Banner meets an inglorious end before my very eyes. Pitiful. Uh. Banner is... Hmm? Banner is not kind of man to go down like this. Ah. If I go down, I take you with me! Watch out! Aegeon! As you wish. Ardenek, you... you sought to... protect us? I'm glad. Majesty! Majesty! Your Majesty, please, no! Your Majesty, I have failed you. Can't be to protect us. You please wake up, Niall. Niall. Morag. Dromak. Yes. Distract the others. Distract? I'm not sure. I. N no, my lady, you cannot. There's still time. Hurry! Yes, my lady. There are more of them. Where? What did you say? This way. The rest of you should get to safety. Chum! I'm on it.
You are... Shh. You're gonna be fine. What do you mean, imagined it? You got us all in a proper tizzy. My apologies. I thought I spied silhouettes. I did not mean to cause trouble. Hey! Huh? Hey, you guys! His Majesty the Emperor is awake. What? Can it be? Majesty? I apologize for making you worry. Majesty! It's... it's a miracle. When Aegean returned to his core, I was certain we had lost you. Honestly, you call yourselves soldiers. First aid? Anyone heard of it? But... his wounds... Just scratches. <laughs> Nothing me and Dromark can't handle. You saved... <laughs> Thank you, Nia. I truly don't know how to... I will never be able to repay you for what you... Oh, don't sweat it. Let's just say you owe me when. That'll do fine, right? Mia. You shouldn't be up. It's only been one day. Please don't strain yourself. Half a day off and look at all this paperwork. I swear, it's like they don't want me to sleep at all. Majesty. Special Inquisitor. I hereby issue you new orders. It is my wish that you travel with the Aegis as an emissary of the Empire. Guard her, and defend her against her enemies until she reaches Tantal. Guard the Aegis? I've already discussed it with his eminence. Forgive me, your majesty. I cannot accept. Just think about what happened yesterday. It would be sheer foolishness for me to leave your side. Is that so? Huh? I can see it in your eyes. It's clear that the Aegis, or rather, that boy, has made a great impression on you. That's not. I am your special inquisitor. Ensuring your majesty's safety is my only concern. To abandon that duty and go traveling, Is this... Aegeon's? A driver who cannot even protect himself is no driver at all. Yesterday's events have made me keenly aware that I have no aptitude for it. It will be of more use in your hands. Majesty. The world is changing, Morag. I trust you more than anyone to lend that boy the wisdom and strength he will need. I miss it, you know. Lake Util and Gormot. What? Remember when the two of us would shake off the servants and go swimming there? Um, uh, yes. Of course. Kids from the nearby village would come too, 
good times. Majesty. If more are then, no, the whole of all rest could be like that again. Wouldn't it be beautiful? Is that my new duty then? In truth, it should have been you sitting in this chair right now. The Imperial line has always passed from father to son. On the day your majesty was born, that's exactly what happened. I knew that day would come. It came as no surprise. You were raised by my father to take the throne of the Empire. As befits the daughter of my Lord Uncle Andric. And I am grateful for it. If not for him, I would never have met Bridget. Never have met them. I'd have missed out on so much. There. Those are your true feelings. <sighs> A magnificent power resides in you. Morak, power like yours exists to be used. Niall. You've been tied down long enough. Follow your heart, Morag Lidair. I have no words. Thank you, Your Majesty. Very well then. I hereby accept the task you have assigned to me. That's the Morag I know and love. Make me proud. So that's how it is. It seems our paths continue to entwine. That's awesome news. To be honest, I was really hoping there was some way you could stick around. I was just thinking of asking you myself. Saved you the trouble, did I? That you did. Thanks a bunch, Morag. I can't help but feel that in all the confusion surrounding Banner, our concerns have been neatly swept aside. The Praetorium maintains absolute control over blade distribution. It is quite vexing. Awakening rates from natural cores are very low, which limits the pool of compatible drivers. So to create large numbers of drivers, the cleansing Indol provides is a necessity. That much I'm willing to accept. The real problem is the fact that the Aegis has awakened. Now, this is no time to be squabbling over territory. If we misread the situation even a little, Uriah itself could be sunk to the Cloud Sea's bed. Emperor Nile must surely be thinking the same thing. That's why he sent his precious Morag to shepherd them along. And now we find ourselves in their debt. Who could have predicted such an act of selflessness? Was it just the passion of youth? Or was it... M my liege? In any case, for now we should keep our troops mobilized while we monitor the situation. I hardly expect Tantal will comply with the Praetor's plan so easily either. Nicely done. We did pretty well if I say so myself.
I've still got room. I can read the battle. I love going on trips. Oh, don't worry. I won't talk your ear off. There's work to do. Got it. Right I in. won't let you die myself fully. Chum, which one do you fancy, Pyra or Mithra? Uh, Zeke, you can't just ask someone... Anyway, they're the same person. I've never really thought of them separately. Are you serious? But they're like totally different characters. Like Mithra is jolly intense, and Pyra is just totally mellow or, I don't know, what's the opposite of pushy? On the outside, maybe. Pyra's got a lot of backbone, too. She can be pretty stubborn. You seem to understand them pretty deeply. Well, I suppose you are their driver. Hey. Yeah? You're a prince from Tantal, aren't you, Zeke? Why were you in the Praetorium? I mean, you can't just ask someone. Oh, his old man kicked him out. Oi! No! Bad blade! Bad! How long have you been standing there? From about... Which one do you fancy? Which one do you fa... That's the whole conversation! As I was saying, my prince got disowned by his father. He spent all his time traveling the world for fun, instead of attending to his studies. Then bye! It wasn't for fun. I was learning all about, uh, society and international relations. International relations, that what you call it? Oi, can it, you? What are you doing anyway, dissing your own driver? <laughs> you guys crack me up. I love him, really. Oh. Anyway, he sounds tough. Zeke's dad, I mean. Tantal is an isolationist society. Crossing its borders without leave is strictly forbidden. It's been that way for ages now. Oh, hmm. But you've seen how my prince here is. Couldn't stop himself leaving a few times, so he got chewed out and disowned. Back when he was 15 or something? Yeah, something like that. Then the Praetor himself found him half dead on the ground one day and took him in. He made up that special envoy stuff. And that's how you ended up in Indol. It all makes sense now. Oh, but wait. Is it safe for you to go back to Tantar, then? This time, we've got official business from the Praetorium. It'll be fine. Probably. Besides... Yeah? Tantal is too ignorant of the outside world. It needs a wake-up call. Sire, we have reached the designated coordinates. Please. Right! Ready? You betcha! Huh? Shut up and sit down, chum. This'll be great!
My lord, Genbu has begun surfacing. I am aware. It's Pandoria. Then the prince? Yes. We have received reports that he made contact with the Aegis in Indol. So after 500 years, he makes his move. Praetor Amalthus. My lord? We must act to protect our days of peace, even if they are a dream that cannot last. Like a bigger version of Tutus. It's called Genbu. It's the same, like, Titan type as Uriah. Normally, it's submerged in the Cloud Sea. Even in early fall, it can get pretty cold inside Tantal. Mind you, don't freeze! <sighs> Only you can't stand the cold. I can provide my own warmth. You can stay close to me if you like. Me as well. You guys are pretty handy to have around. Well, it is our trademark, right? Essentially. Aren't you gonna be cold like that, Shellhead? I'm used to it. I'll be dandy. He's naturally dense. It's good insulation. Oh, oh makes, makes sense. sense. Stop encouraging her, gang of bullies! Great work! 